the, for a number of people, and I think uh, quickly, I'm going to ask you two questions. We're almost out of time. Uh, the first thing is, they say, assuming the Presidential Advisory Committee uh, Against Corruption is not drawing funds, just painting a scenario from the coffers. Yes. Would the Senate still have the powers to summon chief? Oh, they have the powers. The because they have the powers to look into matters of waste, of corruption, of administration of government. How, does so, this, so, how, will they, how will it fall then under these categories that you've mentioned? People. These are people who are giving advice to the president as to how to run his government. Whether the money comes from international donors, whether it comes from within the government, from a budget approved by the National Assembly, the important thing is that they are operating laws over which the National Assembly has powers to make, and that is Section 88. And the laws are the Code of Code of Bureau, Code of Code of Tribunal, ICPC, EFCC. Because they are giving advice on matters concerning them having to do with anti-corruption. They fall squarely under sections 88 and 89. So you're and they also draw salary under section 84 of the Constitution. No, assuming, um, that's the thing, assuming they do not draw any salary. Even if they don't draw salary at all. Yes, from, even the, if they from, don't, the, from the Federation Even coffers. if they don't draw salaries from the Federation account. Yes. The fact that they are giving advice on laws made by the National Assembly under section 88, which are the CC, uh, Code of Conduct Bureau law, mm. the Code of Conduct Tribunal Act, the EFCC Act, and the ICPC Act, then they are subject to Section 18, 88. And under Section 89, the Senate can invite him. And beyond that, under the um, Legislative House's Powers and Privileges Act, laws of the Federation of Nigeria, 2004, which is an act that is a living organ, organism, they have the powers from sections 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 to invite any Nigerian, you say any person, this idea to say whether you are any salary, you are not any salary, to come, bring records, bring papers, bring documents, and come and testify or not. And that if you don't do that, they can tell the police to arrest you, and the police will arrest you there. Okay. The, the, and that they must serve you, but let, let, they have to let, serve let, you. Let's, let's take that away because, you know, I have also asked you, and you haven't answered that one quite pointedly, as to whether or not they can do that if, it, if it's a matter that, you know, has to do with libel or defamation. If, you, if the senators believe that they have been libeled or defamed, can they invite the person to come and explain himself, or do they take the person to court? Sections 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 of the legislative powers a privileges act. Do not say what matters the Senate can invite a person on. He says can invite a person on any matter and to bring records and papers and come and testify on any issue howsoever. Is there? I'm not the maker of the law. Okay. It's legislative powers, um, um, uh, houses powers and privileges act. He didn't specify what matters, whether it is libel whether it is murder, whether it is um, uh, uh, misinformation, whether it is corruption. He said, any person, any Nigerian, even me sitting down here. Isn't that overreaching? Chief, I mean, it is not overreaching. As, as a lawyer, when you look at that sort of, you know, It provision, is not overreaching. Is that not that taking no, the place of the, no, of, the, of the court? No, because under Section 4 of the Constitution, they have the powers to make laws for the peace, order, and good government of Nigeria. And in this, there is no extension. There is no limitation. The plenitude, the amplitude is not limited or circumscribed. So they can invite any Nigerian that if he has information, including me, they can tell me, we think you have been active on constitutional law matters. We want you to come and say this. We saw that you said this. Chief, Chief I'm, I'm going to ask you quickly about uh, Mago, and this will be the last one. Yeah, yeah. Um, you, you have spoken about how the president cannot force the hand of the Senate. Yeah. But the question is, can the Senate force the hand of the president to sack the, no, an acting EF? Because we, we must put into, you know, into uh, the consideration the fact that he was in acting capacity before he was sent there. Let me Can tell he you. continue to act? No, no. Because that would be making a, a mockery of the Constitution. That would be making a, a mockery of Section 4 of the Constitution. That would be making a mockery of Sections 88 and 89 of the Constitution. That would be making a, a mockery of Section 2, Subsection 3 of the EFCC Act itself, which envisages not an acting executive chairman, but an executive chairman. And once you have been rejected as an executive chairman, 
the president has to withdraw it. They cannot force the president to say, you must appoint such and such a person to the position. But the day you leave that acting capacity, then, and you go to the National Assembly, to the Senate for confirmation, and the Senate rejects it, the active, active capacity lapses because you have been put forward for the real thing. Both the executive position and the acting capacity lapses. I've had people also cite Section 11 of the Interpretation Act. And I have laughed that, oh, if you have the power to appoint somebody to an executive position, you also have the power to act. Of course, yes, nobody is saying that. But the Interpretation Act comes into aid when there's a lacuna in the law. And oh. you're asking yourself, what do we do? There's no lacuna in Chief, the ESCC I'm, I'm Act. afraid we have to Session go now. Section 2, Subsection 3 says, hmm. give us an executive chairman. If there's no executive chairman, then the president picks another one. It's yeah. a simple, it has nothing to do with personalities or individuals, whether they are proficient, whether they are effective, whether they are efficient. That is not the issue. Well, but the question is, is, are you doing the right thing? Let us not destroy democracy in this country. Chief, Those people egging the government on wow. to take laws, particularly the executive, to take the laws into their hands, they are not doing well for this country. That's a they fine are destroying place. the fabric That's a of fine democracy place to live in this country. Thank you so and the, much. And the president has to watch them. Sir, thank you, to watch thank you so back. much for coming on yes. Sunrise Daily. Yes. Thank you We're very speaking much. with Chief Mike Ozekome, a senior advocate of Nigeria, a constitutional lawyer, and also a human rights advocate. I send you now back to Lagos, where Chamberlain has uh, Babajide in waiting. Chamberlain.